Our third Abundance Bible study was the shortest, and in a lot of ways we had the richest conversation from it. Um, because the study is so short, um, I'll read it out for us. It's from the 35th chapter of the book of Isaiah, the first two verses. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. A desert blooming, a wilderness praising God. It seems a little bit incongruous, but as we know, the wilderness has an important role to play in God's message to us. Lent is the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness, the 40 days. And so, of course, it came up in our conversation that wilderness is a place one goes to be freed from the distractions of life, a place where one can truly encounter the things that are essential to us or to our world. Wilderness, of course, is a place of despair as well, where familiar things are lost or not present. Wilderness can be a place of restoration. As one participant pointed out, the wilderness in the Pacific Northwest can be a very beautiful place indeed with our lush forests. So wilderness is a lot of things. And it, our discussion brought out the richness of this place and of how much life the seeming wilderness can actually contain or even nurture, sometimes in very unexpected ways. And so these two verses not only pointed us to the richness of poverty, the, the wealth of stuff that we can find in wilderness, but it also gave us a fresh dimension of what God's glory might be and might look like and how God's glory can be present in places that are maybe unexpected or unlikely. And we had a, we had a little round table discussion about what does God's glory look like? And I think a lot of people agreed that um, God's glory, God's glory includes a transformation. And it's in that transformation that we recognize that God has been at work. Some of the more obvious transformations in our own learning and reading, uh, in our faith journeys, in our scriptures, of course, is when Moses encounters God on the mountaintop and comes back glowing in a bright white light. And Jesus going to the mountaintop in the transfiguration and he becomes glowing and white in both in unearthly ways, in ways that are brighter than anything that the regular world can provide or produce. So as we continue our Bible study, we're coming to appreciate the different ways in which God's glory, God, God's self, uh, gets revealed in places that we don't even expect God to be present, or we have taken it for granted, and it's been an opportunity to, to tease out some of these things. So it's a wonderful, rich soil, even the soil that appears to be desert, and unexpected things can spring up for us and bring life to our faith and to our own personal journey. So I hope you can join us as our discussions continue next week as we go into the New Testament um, and start looking at Jesus's parables and Jesus's teachings. Look forward to seeing you soon.